Okay, so I finally watched me the whole the whole Matt Dillahunty versus Jordan Peterson conversation. And I gotta say, as much as I was impressed with a lot of it, there were parts of what Jordan Peterson were trying to do that I was not necessarily disappointed with. Because but I could tell that it was starting to exasperate Matt Dillahunty, and actually, for kind of correct reasons, it seemed like Jordan Peterson was trying to play a, a typical kind of gotcha game with the atheists, you know, where he skeptics, just keeps skepticing him. <laughs> skeptic, skeptic, and then be even more skeptical. Be even more skeptical. If you're really skeptical, you'd be even skeptical of your words right now. You'd even be skeptical. If you were so skeptical, you'd be skeptical that you're even talking, you know, that type of thing. And it felt like that's what he was doing, and Matt kind of got frustrated with him at that point, and I kind of agreed that it seemed like he was doing. But herein lies the problem. Jordan Peterson is working on a thesis, an underlying thesis for, for his work in this particular area of morality. Part of the reason why he's doing what he does with such passionate conviction is because on a certain level he is passionately convinced that religion is essential, was an essential building block of where we are today as a society is absolutely essential. Um, there's a way he even describes it. I don't remember the exact phrasing. Because Matt counters with just because something is useful doesn't mean it is true. Now, there are a couple problems with this particular conversation, how it didn't fully illuminate what's, what's really going on and what's really at issue here. First of all, let's just start with Matt Dillahunty's moral, moral basis. It would have been a lot better conversation if Jordan Peterson had recognized the truth of Matt Dillahunty's moral thesis, I guess you would call it, or moral understanding, and just given it to him, because then they could have actually gotten somewhere. Instead, he tried to not submit, uh, it's hard to explain what he did, but Matt Dillahunty, to paraphrase his ideas of morality, what he is trying to say is if we define morality as well-being, and then they started getting really, really just into a, a problem area, because, you know, if I cut your head off, is that good for your life? That's where he started trying to out-skeptic him, and it started to actually get exasperating. And indeed, Matt actually got a little exasperated with him. I didn't get exasperated with him. But I kind of got exasperated with the situation because the conversation could have got, kept going into places where it was actually useful and productive. Matt Dillahunty's thesis on morality is essentially correct. He likens it to a chess game. Just as in a chess game we can decide on wit what moves are going to win the game, what moves are, objectively speaking, better for succeeding in the game of chess, we can decide on, morally speaking, he doesn't use the word morals, but whatever, it doesn't really matter. What he's getting at is that we can decide what values, what morals, what things, what behaviors, let's say, are better, objectively speaking, for succeeding in producing well-being in both individuals and the society at large. Now, this is not debatable, as he frames it. It is, it is self-evident. It's axiomatic. It stands completely on itself. There is no reason to quarrel with this. And Jordan Peterson did. Maybe because he's never heard him say it enough times. I've heard him say it a few different times now. And it's essentially correct. It's essentially correct. There's no reason to quarrel with it. Um, this is one of, the, one of the things that I think about morality. And it's kind of axiomatic. You take a, take a bad neighborhood, a ghetto, let's say. The behaviors that produce ruin and destruction in the individual and the, the culture of the ghetto, those behaviors are classically defined as immoral. You can objectively study which behaviors are going to produce, you know, ill health in an individual and ill health in a society at large. This is a no-brainer. These are, these are objective. You can study them empirically. So the debate over whether morality is objective or subjective is essentially over. And Matt and Sam Harris have at least the foresight to understand that. Because these, these, these behaviors can be objectively studied. They can be decided on empirically, based on evidence and weighing of, of different factors, just like a chess move. Just like a chess move can be broken down. He's 100% correct. Now, let's go to Jordan Peterson. The problem with Jordan Peterson, and this is a weird problem to notice, but I'm pretty sure this is the root of the problem. He is getting at something. He is batting around something. He is 
coming to a conclusion within himself that he hasn't organically reached yet. That religion is based on the premise, and he's 100% convicted on the premise that religion was 100% necessary for the society at large. And he refers back to Nietzsche a lot. Nietzsche was on the same page. Nietzsche is an atheist, yes. And he said, God is dead, yes. But I've told you in other, other audio tracks of mine, or other videos of mine, he meant God is dead as an organizing principle of Western civilization. And that God, God dying out isn't going to be hallelujah, everybody. It's going to be look out 20th century and look out we did. Because now God, there's no longer a thing called God or religion or an institution for everybody to rally around and commonly understand. And it's going to produce nihilism. And in fact, he was right. Look at the 20th century. Now, okay, there's a whole, going to be a whole bunch of debates of blah, 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 blah. Hitler wasn't, wasn't atheist, he was a Christian, yada, yada, yada. That's not what I'm talking about. Jordan Peterson is essentially correct. I 100% agree with his thesis that there is something really powerfully true and he is going with the idea that because Matt Dillhunty counters with just because something is useful doesn't mean it's true. Jordan Peterson counters with you need to really examine the usefulness. Why is, how, why is something useful? How could something be useful if in fact it isn't at root true? This is the thing that's stirring around inside of him that he hasn't quite come to full recognition of yet. Why? Because he's not actually a Christian. Not actually a believer. Kind, he's a kind of sort of believer. Like most people who are Christians out there in the world. Most people in America, do you believe in God? Yeah, I believe in a something that, you know, kind of sort of ordered something and just tell me how to live my life and, you know, kind of sort of believers. He's a kind of sort of believer. He's not a committed Christian who has had a revelation outside of himself. It's a very different type of believer than myself. He's almost a Christian. He kind of believes in God because he doesn't see how this, how this moral structure could be useful if there wasn't a God. Matt Dillahunty is saying just because it was useful doesn't make it true. He's kind of batting around with the powerful, to powerful intuition that in order for something to be useful on the level that he thinks it is, it has to be at some way true. Now I'll go further with this in the next part of the audios. Uh, just kind of spelling out the pieces on the board so far. Because the difference between Jordan Peterson and other atheists have pointed this out. And he, there's a reason he hems and haws when people ask him if he's a Christian. Because he isn't, he kind of isn't.